Welcome to Timber Creek Church. My name's Stephen. We're so glad you're here for Big Splash Sunday. You ready to celebrate? Come on, let's welcome our Die Ball and Duncan units here. They're going to be worshiping with us. Here we go. Come on. Come on, let's enter his gate. Thank you, Lord.
We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, your promise to us, God. Our hearts are open for you today. We love you. Can't go back to the beginning. I can't control what tomorrow will bring. But I know here in the middle is the place where you promised to be. And this is our response. Together we say, I'm not enough unless you come. We meet me here again. all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? Yes, Lord. We bless you, Lord. As I walk now through the valley, let your love rise above every fear. Like the sun shaping the shadow, in my weakness your glory appears. Come on, let's sing it together. I'm not enough. Not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? I'm not. Timber Creek Church, let's give him your very best this morning. He deserves it. You are enthroned by the praise of your people.
In other words, when we truly praise him, when we truly lift him, he's still God, whether you call him God or not, he's gonna be God, he's always been God, he is God. But there's something about our praise that enthrones him here. Because we're all praising something, we're all worshiping something. And when we lift his name, it is placing him on the thrones of our heart yet again. First day of the week, a great day to put him first, everybody. So glad to have you. All of our locations joining us, Mount Enterprise, Groves, Online, Iglesia, Timber Creek, Nacogdoches, right here at the broadcast location. All of our first time guests, you're here for the first time. Let's give, let's give a welcome to everybody. Hey, keep on clapping because they had to add extra chairs at Mount Enterprise today. So cool. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Now, usually I would, uh, I'd say a couple things. I'd have you be seated. We'd take a look at the screens. Um, but what I wanna do is I wanna say thank you for two things. I wanna say thank you last week, honoring us, our decade of ministry here as lead pastors hundreds of thank you cards that we've read. It's it just amazing. Thank you. You are a gift to us. But secondly, I want to thank you for um, putting God first. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything else is put into order. When I put him first, it takes zero faith to put him last. <laughs> it takes real faith to put him first. And when we worship, that's placing him first verbally. And then we take actions with that. So here's what I wanna invite you to do, all locations. I just want you, if you just be seated as the music continues to play, instead of transitioning to something, we, we will in a moment, but this is still worship. And when it comes time for us to receive the tithes and the offerings, the giving, um, sometimes that can feel funny, like it can feel transactional. But the truth is, Part of the ways we show that God is first in our lives is, is through our finances. And so it's not meant to be transactional, it's meant to be transformational. So when I pray in just a moment, as at the end of the prayer, we're gonna put a scripture up, the music's gonna play, the offering plates are gonna pass. You can give in many ways, in the bucket or online or in one of our giving boxes if you're not prepared to give in this moment. If you've never tried to put God to the test on putting him first financially, it's be a great time to just try and see what God does. It's been a banner year. God's up to something big. Let's pray. Father, as we worship you, our offerings are a part of worship. We don't want to give out of an obligated heart. We want to give out of a cheerful heart. You love a cheerful giver. And so that's what we choose to do today. So as we give, thank you for all you've given to us. It's a way for us just to say, thank you, you're God. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. As the offering plates are passed in all of our locations, let's just celebrate him and reflect on this scripture. It's time. Time for what? Something big. Something huge. How big are we talking? Big, really big. This is a blockbuster, folks. You talk about movies? Even better. Movies. And church? In church! You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. We call it... At the Movies. What did you say? At the Movies. I gotta see this for myself. Don't worry, I won't miss. So when does it start? Coming soon! Soon. Real soon. Do hey, you mind if I bring a friend? Bring a friend. What a good idea. I wish we could all bring a friend. Sounds like a plan. 
count me in. Would there be anything else? Popcorn! Get your popcorn! All right, homie, I'll see you there. I'll see you soon. Timber Creek, we are so glad you've chosen to spend part of your weekend with us. Before we continue in service today, we want to let you know everything, and we mean everything, that it's coming up for you and your family. At Timber Creek, prayer is paramount. This week, we finish out 21 days of prayer at all of our locations. Prayer is taking place at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. at our Lufkin campus and 6 a.m. at our Nacogdoches, Groves and Mount Enterprise campuses. It's never too late to join us in prayer. We can't wait to see you there. Scan the QR code in your worship guide for more information on times, locations, and resources. Your God-given potential is our mission and taking next steps is what will get you there. The fall session of Next Steps is launching soon. We've got it all available for you. If you're looking for connection or community, we encourage you to join a group. Groups create a space for people to intentionally share their lives with each other, grow spiritually together, and encourage each other through the highs and lows of life. Another way you can find community is by attending Tables of 10. It's as simple as signing up and having a meal at your favorite restaurant and meeting other people from Timber Creek. Whatever you choose, these next steps will help you not do life alone. Maybe you feel like something is hindering you from moving forward in your spiritual journey. Or maybe you feel like you're seeking more in your relationship with God. Encounter is a great next step for you. The goal of Encounter is to equip you to remove the things that hinder you from a deeper relationship with God so that you can walk in true victory and freedom. Encounter signups are happening now. Scan the QR code in your worship guide for locations and times. We have a lot coming up for the next generation as well. If you're an incoming sixth grader, tonight at 6.30, we have TC Youth Upgrade happening just for you. We want to meet you and give you behind the scenes access to everything related to TC Youth. Youth Upgrade is happening in Lufkin and Nacogdoches. Side note, TC Youth is launching in two weeks, August the 28th at 6.30 p.m. We also have child dedications happening on Sunday, September the 1st. If you would like your child to be dedicated to the Lord, you can find out more information by scanning the QR code in your worship guide. What an exciting time to be involved here at Timber Creek. So many things that you can be a part of. We hope that you will take advantage of it. For more information on anything mentioned today, scan the QR code on your worship guide. And once again, thank you for being with us this weekend. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is... I want to set the tone for the rest of the time we have. And that is, today is truly a gift. It is an opportunity, an intersection moment for us to take a next step in our relationship with Jesus. Whether you are a seasoned saint or you have just started taking next steps with Christ, today is an opportunity that by the end of the service, we're gonna go back into worship and every single one of us are gonna be given an opportunity. Whether you take it or not is up to you. You'll be given an opportunity to take a next step and receive more from the giver of good gifts. Scripture says it like this, the half brother of Jesus in the book of James, he says, every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of the heavenly lights who he doesn't change like shifting shadows. If, if he says he is who he says he is, he doesn't change based on culture or your perception. If he if you ask for bread, he doesn't give you a stone. You ask for an egg, he doesn't give you uh, a serpent or a scorpion. How much more, if we ask, does he give one of the greatest gifts, and that is the Holy Spirit? In fact, we've been saying all this series, the greatest gift to the lost, those who have not found their way, because there's only one way, one truth, one life, and that's through Jesus. The greatest gift is salvation, but the greatest gift to those that are saved is a personal relationship, a deeper, intimate friendship, 
with the Holy Spirit, a gift from God himself. Last week, we kind of uh, have been uh, like, like kind of tightening the lug nuts on the tire of uh, understanding a foundational relationship with the Holy Spirit. And we said, Holy Spirit is so much more than a power. He's not something you run into in the altar. He's not this whoo goosebump uh, or, or a doctrinal position depending upon the denomination of your choosing. He is a divine person that resides in the Christ follower's heart. And he's a giver of gifts. And many times we have sought out the gifts that he gives versus seeking out the giver of those gifts. That's why we have jumped into this series. Hello, my name is Holy Spirit because introductions and reintroductions are so important. Introductions and reintroductions are so critically huge. In introductions, we see that in the New Testament when Jesus shows up on the scene. These gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are many of the same stories. Some are unique to each gospel, but they are introductions into who Jesus is, where he's come from, what he's going to do, how he fulfills scripture, and we get this introduction of Jesus, and here's what's so interesting. It's very important, like, you know, the power of a first impression. The first three gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all of them tell this account, and it is of Jesus being water baptized. And the story goes on in these three accounts that John, as he's with his crowd, he's saying, hey, as Jesus shows up on the scene, I, I baptize you with water, okay? I baptize you, John, I baptize you with water, but one who's more powerful than I will come, and he will, and boy, will he. He will, boy, will he. He will walk on water, turn water into wine, raise the dead, heal the sick, mend the broken. He will uh, die in our place. Uh, he will answer tough questions. He will turn the pharisaical understanding on its ear like he will do so much. And you would think that that's what John would say, like he is gonna do all these awesome crazy things. He's gonna tell stories like nobody's told stories. He's gonna, uh, like he is gonna be like the sacrifice for all of our sin. But what John says in all of these three gospels he says he will baptize you with the holy spirit and fire now getting to water hopefully we do that every once in a while to take a shower get into water like that's a normal thing baptizing you with water that's not like a very dangerous unless you're being bat you know water boarded i wouldn't recommend that unless your kids just will not obey but but to be baptized with the holy spirit and fire that's not like a woo-woo, like fire, like, like, like where we make it this uh, charismatic thing. It's simply showing he's going to do a baptism that's a supernatural thing. Because if you get into the fire, there's no way that you're not hurt. There's no way that you're not protected without there being something supernatural taking place. Much like the burning bush when God shows up and the bush isn't destroyed as the voice of God to Moses happens. Now, those are for the first three Gospels. When you add the book of John, same story, same situation, but John goes into like the nth detail. He goes into the special details, and he says, John saw Jesus coming toward him, and he said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It's the only time Jesus is referred to as the Lamb of God in all four Gospels, just one time. John goes on to say, I myself, I didn't know him. But the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. And then John gave this testimony. He said, the one who sent me to baptize with water, he told me, the man on whom you see the spirit come down and remain, which is what happened when Jesus was baptized in water himself, the, the, the Holy Spirit, and it looked like in the form like, like a dove, wasn't a dove, but like a dove, like whoever that happens to, He's the one who is going to baptize with the what? Holy Spirit. He's going to baptize with the Holy Spirit. John goes on to say, I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. All four Gospels talk about the Son of God. Now you add the book of Acts and Jesus himself is saying these words. Jesus, on one occasion while he was eating with them, he had already resurrected. Uh, he is now living uh, on around for 40 days, showing up many convincing proofs of his resurrection. And he gives them this command. Don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. Because John baptized with water, but in a few days, you're gonna be baptized 
with the Holy Spirit. So we've just seen that one time in the Gospels, he's considered the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's how he's mentioned. Son of God in all the Gospels. And also, Jesus himself and all four Gospels, one of the first things that we need to know about who he is, is he is a baptizer in the Holy Spirit. Like out of all the characteristics, he's a baptizer in the Holy Spirit. So this whole word baptizer and the idea of actual baptism can get a little twisted, can um, become a little uh, unknown and mysterious. And I wanna take the mystery out of the meaning. I wanna take the mystery out of the meaningfulness of what baptism is all about. You can write it down in your notes. Baptism is simply this. It, it means it's not an English word. It's a translation of, of the word that means to be immersed, fully covered, all in, like immersed. So there's not just a receiving of the Holy Spirit. There's an immersion in the Holy Spirit. There's not just a, a sprinkling of water. There's a ba baptism literally means, it doesn't mean the word water. It means immersion. And in scripture, we actually see through the gospels and through the writings of Paul, all through scripture, we see that there are actually three baptisms that are available to the life of a believer or the life of a human. You don't even have to be a believer. The life of a human, there are three baptisms available. And I wanna share those with you today. And at the end, wanna give an opportunity for anybody that's taking next steps to experience one or two or even all three. There's no mystery. There's no biting your bottom lip. There's no having to grab the horns of the altar and beg for anything. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. And how much more will he give the Holy Spirit and any gift that he has to those who ask? So the first baptism is this, and we read it in scripture. You can take notes. Uh, the first baptism is when we are baptized into the body of Christ, when we are immersed into who Christ is. And this isn't just a personal experience. This is actually becoming part of his body, becoming part of the family of God. Paul says it like this in 1 Corinthians 12. We are all immersed, we are all baptized by one spirit into one body. We all have different functions in the body. Some are thumbs, some are fingers, some are elbows, some are eyes, some are ears. Like we're all, we all have different parts of what we're doing, but we're all one body and we are baptized into the body of Christ. Paul goes further in Galatians and he says, you're all sons of God through faith. It's not about what you could do. It's about just like believing in what you can't see, believing, putting your faith in someone in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were immersed into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. Those of you that have chosen to say, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. So what does this equal? Baptism into the body of Christ. What does that really mean? Here, here's what it is. It simply means salvation. When I get saved, I become part of the family of God. I'm created by God, but how many of you know you can, uh, you can have a, a, a uh, male who is your biological father, they created you, they helped create you, but they're not your dad, they're not your father, they just happen to be the person who created. There's a different relationship when, with, than being created versus being a dad. And God creates us, but to become part of the body, we are saved and we become sons and daughters. Now our heir, our, we are heirs with Christ. So maybe you're saying, hey, I wanna be baptized in the body of Christ. What should I do? Like how do I get saved? And I know for some of us that was a long time ago. But I just simply wanna remind us of the simplicity and the beauty of what salvation really is. So if you want to be baptized into the body of Christ, it's not about biting, biting your bottom lip. It's not about joining a church. It's not about uh, making sure you get all your ducks in a row and start walking that, 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 that straight and narrow. It, it has nothing to do with that. Here, here are basically your next steps towards salvation. For the first time, or maybe 
you did it, you were baptized in the body, but as far as like living that way, this is a reminder of what you did. It's a reminder to like, reaffirm that decision that you made a long time ago of being immersed into the grace of God. And the first one is very simple. You simply have to admit that I am a sinner and I am powerless to fix it on my own. Sin is not the thing I do, it's the authority I reject. Sin is my way over God's way in any way. And part of Fixing a problem is admitting when we have a problem. And here's the hard thing for us to admit ever since the beginning of time. We're hard, it's hard for us to admit that I want control over everything, that I wanna be all powerful, that I wanna be God, that I wanna have the final say, that I can fix my mistakes, but I cannot fix my sin, friends. And I am powerless, I just cannot fix my way over God's way in any way. And so I need someone who's more powerful than I to fix that for me. When I understand that, I can then begin to believe that Jesus is all power. He is who he says. And he does what only he can do. Only Jesus can fix my sin problem. I'm a good problem solver. I am a terrible savior. And I believe. I take it to the bank. I, know, I just got to... Okay, he is who he says he is. He's the son of the living God. He lived a sinless life. He died to death in my place. He died and he rose again. He's preparing a place in heaven for me. He, he is who he says he is. I believe that in my heart. He does what he says he's gonna do. So when I admit I'm powerless in my own and I believe he is who he says he is, I've got one more step. I confess it. I'll say it. Jesus, you're my savior. You're the one who saves me from my sin. And many people can say that, but we confess him as Savior, and then we take him as Lord. It's one thing that he saves our sin. It's another thing that then to say, and be my Lord. In other words, you're the one that has ultimate authority. You're the one that has ultimate power. You're the one that has final say. Because when we can't do that, we're basically admitting we still want the power. We still want a sliver. We still want control. And you're gonna fight that no matter whether you bow a knee to Christ. There's always gonna be this tractor beam that wants to suck you in to being about your control and your ability. That's why finances are an issue. It's why giving becomes an issue. And we say, ah, oh, the church just wants my money, when really it's like a check engine light in our own desire for control on stuff. Scripture says, if you confess with your mouth, you know what that word confess means in the original language? To speak together. In other words, for you to say what Jesus is already saying over you, for you to believe what Jesus believes about you and about himself, when we confess and we say it together with our mouths, Lord Jesus, and we believe in our heart that God did raise him from the dead, you're saved. You're saved. You will be saved. <laughs> For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. I'll tell you what, I, I read that again just this morning. And I couldn't help but just take a moment and just raise my hands to heaven and say, thank you. You who are rich, rich in mercy and rich in grace and rich in second and third and 74th chances. He who is Lord over all is also rich to all who call upon him. Now, can, I, can I be honest with you though? That sounds too easy. I mean, it's harder for you to be a kid in my house it's harder for you to be a Yancey than it is for you to be a Christ follower because you've got to toe the line in the Yancey house. You want to live in this house, bucko? You're going to follow these rules. You're going to do this. My way or the highway sounds too easy. It is too easy for us because Jesus did all the heavy lifting. Because if it was not easy, it would be about you and it just ain't about you. It's about the one who you can believe, the one you can confess, the one you can say he has all power because I don't have enough power to do it. That's 
the first baptism, before we're done today, if you need to know that you know that you know that you're saved, we're going to do that today. We're going to call on the name of the Lord. But there's a second baptism too. And that second baptism is the baptism into the water. John was showing us that and on the day that the Holy Spirit fell on the day of Pentecost and the church is birthed in Acts chapter two, those that heard the message and believed they were baptized, 3,000 people baptized that day. That wasn't, that wasn't uncommon. Every time you would go into the temple, part of the cleansing process is in order to get to the temple and do your sacrifices, they had ceremonial washing pots and large ceremonial washing pools where they would walk down steps, be baptized, and they would step back up out of that pool and they would go in representing, declaring, I am cleansed, ready to get into the temple. Now, there are several denominations that would say baptism in the water is what equals salvation. I would say to you, um, if you really want to build your life on the word of God, you, that's going to be a struggle you need to struggle through. Because being baptized in the water is not salvation. That, that is something we would have to do. As a matter of fact, some denominations take it even further and they take it to the pastor while you're under the water has to say something very specific. So really your salvation is based on what the pastor says versus what you've declared. So if the pastor doesn't declare the exact same Trinity thing or in Jesus name or that or whatever, some that are say like, it's only Jesus. If you're baptized in the name of Jesus only, then you're actually saved. But if it's not that, although Jesus himself said baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, other times it's said in Jesus name. So at Timber Creek, we got your bases covered, baby. We baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in Jesus name. It's all good. It's all good. But this has nothing to do with whether you're saved or not, because again, it's about you finding water and getting somebody and doing it. It's not about what you could do. But what is this about? It is important though, Jesus himself and all four gospels show how important it is for Jesus to be baptized himself. It's about declaration. It's not salvation. That's what I believe and confess. But water baptism is a declaration. I remember one of the uh, uh, famous shows, The Office, uh, the crazy uh, manager, Michael Scott, has horrible financial troubles, and he walks out into the bullpen, and he says, I declare bankruptcy. And one of his uh, employees, Oscar, walks back into the office and says, Michael, you, you can't just yell bankruptcy. He says, I didn't yell it. I declared it. He says, that's not how it works. <laughs> You, this, this ring that I got on Christmas 24 years ago um, that I placed, that Janet placed on my third uh, finger on June 10th of 2000 on this stage right here, um, this doesn't mean I'm married. It just declares that I'm married. The covenant relationship that I've made with my wife the covenant that we stand for better or worse and sickness and in health for richer or for poor, I do. That's what shows like we're making these covenant heart, believe and confess. This just declares, <laughs> this is taken. <laughs> this declares she's taken. I, she's part of my life, I'm part of hers and we are one. And all throughout the New Testament, as a matter of fact, 27 times in the New Testament, this declaration takes place. Bible says those who accepted his message, those that believed it, those that accepted it, they were baptized. They, they were baptized. It was part of it. It was the first step. You, you do not have to get everything right in order to be baptized here. You, you have to believe and confess. A next step would be baptized to declare it to those around you, to make a public declaration. And then you are publicly declaring I want to become more like Jesus. Not that you have to become like Jesus in order to be baptized. It's simply, I'm with him and he's with me and we're gonna make a public declaration because when you get married day two, you haven't figured all it out, have you? What marriage is all about. Marital bliss doesn't come without some marital blisters first. Whoever acknowledged me before men, I will acknowledge him before my father in heaven. 
there's something about acknowledging publicly. I'm going public with this thing. He is who he says he is. This is who I'm a part of. This is my tribe. This is my God. And so, hey, I want to be baptized into the water. What should I do? Three steps. You got to slow down and decide. Listen, for some of you, you were baptized so young, it was just like what your parents did or was what your denomination did or you did it in a way, and that, 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 that's okay. But if you weren't truly for yourself declaring it, then, then I want you to know, like, it's okay to be baptized today. It's okay to be baptized. If, if you've not taken that step or for some reason it's been holding you back, you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm good enough, uh-uh. Not about, <laughs> God's good enough. It's not about you ever being good enough. Nobody's good enough to be baptized. It's what he did. It's how he baptized us all in his grace. And so you gotta slow down just for a second and say, have I made a public declaration, a meaningful declaration to say, I'm taken. I'm not perfect. But for richer or for poor in sickness and health, till he comes back or till death, not us part, but death, I'm connected to him face to face for eternity. I have decided to follow Jesus. For some of you, maybe that needs to be a re-public declaration, a re-upping on that declaration today. So that's first step. Slow down and decide, to decide. You know what decide, I've said it many times. Genocide is this mass killing. Suicide, killing of oneself. Decide, you kill your options. That's what deciding to be baptized is about, is I'm being baptized not into this, into this, into this, into this. I'm being baptized into Christ. I am his and he is mine, and, and I am going to be under his banner. So you slow down and decide, and some of you, you need to decide today. You do not get in your car today unless you've decided, I, have, I want to follow Jesus, and I want to follow him in water baptism. And so you know what your next step is? You got to find some water. And then you know what the third step is? You get baptized in the water. You just get immersed in the water. That's what you do. A couple of years ago, my wife and I went to Israel with 50 of our, of our church family, and I had the privilege of in the Jordan in the same river that Jesus himself was baptized in. This was a special moment because it was a declar It was just a declaration. Was Janet already saved? Has she been already water baptized? Had I already been water baptized? Yes. But there was just something about taking that moment and making a declaration even with, to those there that like, this is a holy moment. I'm just, we're just reminding ourselves. And that may, be, that may be something that you may need to do to like re-engage the God of the universe and the love of his son because maybe you've drifted and it's time to recommit, not just in your thoughts, but in a declaration. Salvation is the first baptism. Into water is a declaration of that salvation. But there's a third baptism. And here's the third baptism. It's baptized into the Holy Spirit. Jesus, when he's resurrected, he walks in on, sun, on the day he's resurrected, he walks into the safe house where the disciples were, and he shows up, he says, peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Same way God breathes into the dust in the garden and births man. This is a breathing into them, the, the divine, and it's a born again experience. This is when they, they were with him in the flesh. Now this is where they receive him. They are baptized into Jesus and they receive the Holy Spirit. When you're saved, you receive the Holy Spirit. But that's not a baptism of the Holy Spirit because then later, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you've heard me speak about. Now they've already received it. He breathed on them. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be immersed with the Holy Spirit. Here's another story of this, those three baptisms happening all at once. Philip went down to a city in Samaria. This is after Jesus had resurrected. And he proclaimed the Christ there. When they believed, okay, first baptism, when they believed Philip as he preached the good news of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. 
Now, when the apostles in Jerusalem, they had heard, they got a text that Samaria had accepted the word of God. They sent Peter and John, some of the leaders there, to kind of check it out. Well, this is cool. And when they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them. Well, I just thought they were just baptized or they received the Holy Spirit when they breathed out. No, yeah, but they had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them and then they received the Holy Spirit. So there's these three baptisms happening all at once. So why not all at once though? Why not when I say I believe and I confess that I get the baptism and I don't really have to do the water thing and the, and the baptizing the Holy Spirit, that sounds a little woo-woo thing anyway. Like why not all at once? Because again, baptizing the Holy Spirit has nothing to do with salvation. And if we tried to put all of that, God is, so, you know how smart God is? Smarter than you, boy and girl, smarter. He knew if he put it all in one package, then it would be all about like, how do I get this? How do I, because I would have to wait and receive and remove and do these other things. And so like, if it's all about that, it's what I do. And so he says, no, 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 salvation stands alone because it's not what you do, it's what he already did. Then you declare it. So here's what happens. Oh my gosh, this came to me this morning. I can't wait to say it to you. When you are saved, when you believe and confess, it is like God the Father opening up the heavens and him saying, just like he said of his son, that's my boy, that's my girl, who I love, who I am well pleased. He declares himself over you. But in water baptism, you declare him over you. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit... When it comes to the Holy Spirit, this is an activation. Salvation, he declares who I am in him. Water baptism, I declare who I am in him. In the Holy Spirit activation, he declares through me who he is to others. That's how he works. That's the divine partnership we have in the body of Christ. So let me show it to you one more way. In 1 John, John says it like this. There are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, who is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And it's hard to fight the Trinity doctrine when it says, and these three are one. The scripture goes on to say, and there are three that bear witness on on all locations, on stuff we see here. The spirit, the water, and the blood. The blood is what paid for your first baptism salvation. The water is the declaration. The spirit is the activation. And these three agree as one. And what has happened is, People have been so misintroduced or scared or bad first impressions that we have a New Testament church that has experienced some of the good and perfect gifts, but not all. And on the day of Pentecost, when the church is birthed, the people heard the story of God and the power of Jesus, and they were cut to the heart, and they said, what should we do? Here are the three things that Peter would say in so many words. He says, repent, be baptized, receive the gift. And so what do we do? Remove anything keeping me from all God has for me. All that you have is not all God has, everybody. All that you have is not all God has. Second, you ask God, would you give me all that he has for me? Friends, there is more for you. You may have been baptized in water, but Jesus came and he made it very, very clear in all gospels. I wanna baptize you in something supernatural, immerse you in a power that activates you, that gives you a voice, my voice through you to the world. Access, empowerment to be my witnesses. And next Sunday I'll talk about how do we take those next steps of activation. And then you know what you do? You receive the Holy Spirit by faith and you keep being filled because you are not filled up to be filled up, you are filled up to be poured out. You are not filled up to be filled up, you are filled up to be poured out, and you simply remove anything. So that's a repentance. God, if there's anything in my life, I remove it. I ask God to give me it all, 
and I receive it in faith. Like, it's not about getting a evidence. It's actually faith is the evidence. It's the DNA evidence first of knowing, no, 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 I'm receiving all that he has for me today. I finish with a story. Uh, you may have put in the back of your Rolodex the idea of Charlemagne. Charlemagne. Uh, I thought in history he was Charlie Maine. Charlie Magni is how I read it. Charlemagne was over the Franks, and he helped lead some of the Holy Crusades. It's, it was a forcing people to be, to be saved, and if you weren't baptized, you were killed. So it was like, uh, who wants to be baptized today? <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, me? <laughs> like, okay. And, and he uh, was part of taking his group, the Franks, through Turkey and forcing people to, like, be baptized, accept Jesus as their Savior, or die. All right, that was, that was the agreement. And, and so these soldiers were commissioned in his army to also be baptized or you would die. But here's what he said. The, the history says, the story goes, that he said, you're gonna be baptized, but you're also gonna have to kill people for it. And that's a pretty bloody business. So when you're baptized, have your sword in your hand. And here's what would happen. Help me out, Justin. Could you imagine seeing this all across the deal? If you have a foot fetish, uh, bounce your eyes. Um, what would happen is, here, put that in the deal. I probably should have handed you the sword, not the microphone. Ugh. All right, so what would happen is all of these guys would go to be baptized but they would keep their sword in their hand because their arm was gonna have to do some killing and they were gonna give all themselves to Christ and all themselves to the kingdom of God. But when it, but when it came part of the sword, they would baptize them and then they would put them down. You can put your hand on top of my head now. And they would say, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. But they would keep the sword out because they had to, they had to do some crazy killing. And, and I mean, as crazy as that sounds like, at least we're sophisticated in the 21st century. I mean, we would, we would never be so naive when it comes to Jesus. However, there are many times where we want to give everything to God. I'm all in for you, but don't tell me who to love. Don't tell me how to, what, what to do with my heart. Don't tell me where to put my thoughts and my emotions and, and my desires. I'm, I'm ready, but, but I, I mean, let, let me at least, like, can I just hang on to this? Can I just hold on to this? Can I just keep this. I mean, maybe it's not your heart, but maybe it's, you know, I, I don't, oh, 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 now we gonna meddle. Now we gonna meddle. Because maybe it's on my hobbies. Like, look, 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 I'm gonna put Jesus first. I put God first. But I mean, you know, <clears throat> when it comes time to any season, baseball season, football season, de uh, whatever these antlers are, season. It's like, I'm all in, but God, but, but don't make me, no, I'm a, you know, whatever. And I'm not saying you can't have hobbies, but I'm saying how many of you are holding back something from God? Uh-oh, you may not see it, but you know what it is. It's a wallet. Oh God, you can have everything, but pff, money. I had a church just after, you know, like, like it just. Uh, I lost my glasses. <laughs> I don't even know what it is, but you do. And you wanna go all in for God, but there's some barriers because you just, it could even be a doctrinal thing. It, it, it could be a lust thing. It could be a substance thing. It could be a anything. Because my way over God's way in any way. I'm yours, Lord. I got everything. But I just, I can't do it without this. And when we're baptized, really what we're answering is, who's going to have the control of my life? God, I give you, I give you everything. I am surrendering full control.
it may not be your next move to be baptized in water. It may not be your next move. You may need to consider the cost before confessing and believing. But friends, that last blank on your notes, would you write it down? All means all. And for all who are far off, he has promised that he will save you. You take the step to declare it. He's also promised he'll give you good and perfect gifts. And I'm gonna invite all of our locations right where you are to simply stand where you are. And we're gonna worship God today. And here are the three steps we're taking. First, if you need to be baptized into the body of Christ, you would now admit, I need him. I'm powerless to change myself, to save myself. Believe on the Lord, confess it, and you're saved. There's some of you, you need to be baptized today. We already have all of these baptism candidates ready to go, but here's the deal. If you came and you're not prepared, it's okay. We're prepared for you. If you, in just a moment, want to be baptized today to declare Jesus, we have a change of clothes. You'll go in the clothes you have. What? Yeah, just do it. Just do it. We got water. You got the opportunity. Get baptized today. We have a t-shirt for you, some shorts to change into afterwards, a towel for you. We got a whole plan for you. But you're the one that's going to have to declare that for yourself. So in just a moment, I'm going to invite you to move and be a part of that line. You'll go straight over there and just get in line as we worship. We're going to baptize you. But there's a third thing we're going to do. And it's not going to be weird. It's not going to be, uh, it's going to be shepherded well. Here's the only step. You can expect nothing but this. For some of you, it's time to just take a physical step out of your comfort zone. And if you would like to receive more, if you would like to be immersed in the Holy Spirit, we're just gonna request and receive today. And so when I pray, I'm gonna give you direction and uh, we don't do this often. We very rarely do this on a Sunday morning. But I wanna invite you that maybe you would like to step out from where you are and simply take a few steps and just stand here. Nobody's gonna even lay hands on you. That's not what we're doing today. It's just more of like a sacrifice moment, a sacrifice of praise that if you'd like to just take a step forward, say, I wanna receive all you have for me. As we worship, you can just worship here or you can worship where you are. It doesn't matter. It's just if you would like to take that step, that could be a step of saying, God, I, I wanna receive all that you have for me. And now I wanna pray over everybody. Would you close your eyes? Father, I pray you're already moving on the hearts of your people. May they respond today, not according to what a preacher has said, but what the Spirit of God is saying to woo them towards you in the next decision they make. All locations, in Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. So if you're ready and you wanna be baptized and you weren't ready for it, I'm gonna ask you to step out from where you are. We're gonna give you a party. We're gonna party everybody. You step out and get in line over here. Uh, for all of our candidates, you are making the decision to follow Jesus, to follow in his Christ-like character, conviction, and conduct, and it is our pleasure to baptize you today in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And if you just wanna receive more today and just wanna worship with us, take a step from where you are, stay where you are, but let's give him our absolute best today. Come on, let's celebrate God today as we worship him in spirit and in truth. Just one word, you calm the storm that surrounds me. And just one word, the darkness has to retreat. Just one touch, I feel the presence of heaven. Just one touch. My eyes were open to see, my heart can help, and we say, there's nothing that our God can do, there's not a mountain that He can move, oh, praise the name that makes a way, there's nothing that our God can do, just one word, you heal what's broken inside.
inside me. Thank you, Lord. Just one word, and you revive every dream. Just one touch, I feel the power of heaven. Just one touch, my eyes were open to see. My heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that I God can do. There's not a mountain that He can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. singing with faith in our heart. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Still time if you want to step out. We're still baptizing in Jesus. Remember those walls we called sin and shame. They were like prisons we couldn't escape, but He came and He died and He rose. Those walls are rubble now. Remember those giants we called death and grave. They were like mountains that stood in our way, but He came. And he died, and he rose Those giants are dead now This is our God, this is who he is He loves us This is our God, this is what he does He saved us He bore the cross, beat the grave Let heaven and earth proclaim This is our God Remember the fear that took 
They're giving me all sorts of signals. How powerful is it what God has done in this room? We thank God for life change and we pray that it's been a change in our hearts. As we go from here, we go in the power of the Spirit as we walk out of here. And one way we do that, on your seats, you had those invite cards for our um, uh, At The Movie series. We don't want them in here. Take them, take them with you. Find someone, invite them here. Go be empowered in Jesus' name. Thanks for being here. Have a great week. We'll see you here next week.